Hello everybody, in case you're new here, my name is Michael Wagner. I teach at the Westfall College of Media Arts and Design at Drexel University in Philadelphia. And on this channel, I talk about digital media, game design and spatial audio. Now, this is the third part of a three part tutorial series on how to set up a continuous delivery environment for a Unity game development projects with the help of the Perforce version control system and the Jenkins automation server. In this third part, we're going to look into Jenkins and how to set that up. Uh, now, I should mention that this is very beginner friendly. So if you've never done anything with Jenkins or anything with Perforce, this is an excellent way to get started. Uh, and uh, if you have not seen the first two videos, please go back and watch them. They are necessary to understand what we're doing here. In the first part, we looked into how to set up a Perforce version control server on an Amazon AWS uh, Elastic Cloud instance. And in the second part, we looked into how to actually use Perforce with Unity. So these are necessary to really understand what we are doing in the third part. Uh, I should also mention that the videos have been created in the early days of the pandemic, in the spring and summer of 2020. They were originally meant to augment some of our game design courses. And, uh, you know, kind of uh, as, uh, as it is now about a year after that, uh, some of the GUIs that I'm using or some of the websites that I'm showing might look different, but the functionality of everything that I'm doing is still exactly the same. So you should be able to follow along quite easily. The video was also created before I started this YouTube channel. And that means that my audio and video setup was slightly differently. So don't let that distract you. Uh, it sounds and looks somewhat differently, not better or worse, just different. Uh, and uh, with that being said, don't forget to press the like button and subscribe to my channel in case you get any value of the videos that I'm doing. If you have any questions or comments, please use the comment section below or join my Discord community. Invite is in the description below. And with that being said, have fun with the following tutorial. Hello, everybody. Uh, in this tutorial, we're going to look into how to implement a continuous deployment environment with, with Unity and a, uh, a continuous deployment platform, which, which we, we're going to use Jenkins for that. Now, first of all, what is continuous deployment? Now, uh, in a previous tutorial, we talked about Perforce and we're actually going to uh, continue working on that particular example. And Perforce was a version control system that we used in order to make sure that we always have the correct kind of source on our server and that everybody works from the same files. Now, as long as you are in a small team, that is actually not particularly complicated because you just check in and regularly would, you would kind of create new builds and kind of make sure that everything works fine. However, as soon as you are working in a bigger environment, things become a little bit more complicated. Uh, what people usually do is that they are essentially a um, come to an agreement that at the end of the day, or the, the company demands it, at the end of the day, essentially everybody uh, commits their source to the central uh, source uh, version control system, and then a build is made, and from that build, essentially the testing is done the day afterwards. Um, if you are in a, work, in a big team, however, there are many things that can go wrong uh, if everybody checks in at the same time. There could be conflicts, there can be things that, that, that suddenly break. Uh, so so it, it happens actually quite often that the build is not really building the way it should, and then people need to go back and kind of check, figure out what, what happened, why do things not work the way they do. Uh, and it becomes a whole complicated procedure. And, uh, and if you're not able to resolve it, then you're essentially losing a day on, on playtesting uh, because you can't play, uh, or you can't test the latest build of your, of your game. Now, in order to, to get around that, what you can do is instead of having a uh, check-in time, let's say five o'clock in the evening, uh, why not make a build whenever somebody changes something in the source code? And if you're already building that every time somebody checks something in, why not do that automatically? And that essentially is continuous deployment. So in essence, it, is, it means that uh, whenever somebody checks in new stuff to the version control system, uh, a separate server that that works completely autonomously, uh, will we'll see that and will pull all the information from that version control system, make a build and distribute that build to all the people who need it. And, uh, and that way uh, the, the, the system immediately recognizes if something is broken. So if, if you or anybody else in your team submits a, something that, that is not working or kind of is breaking the build, everybody is immediately notified that there's something wrong, please fix that. And, and that way things have become a lot more manageable. 
Now the system that we are going to use is Jenkins. Uh, the big the advantage of, of that is that it's essentially a free system. It's not particularly complicated to set up, but there's a little bit more to it than just kind of setting up a regular uh, unit environment. So in this particular tutorial, I'm going to just walk you through how to set that up on a separate machine. This is actually a little bit more complicated because I need to work with two two machines simultaneously uh, and and how to connect it with your with your with your version control system in in our particular case we're going to use perforce um, now before we can actually do that there are a couple of things that we need to do so let me just uh, start by opening up the perforce example and this is really the example that we worked that we that we worked on when we talked about the perforce version control system and if you remember, it was not a particularly complicated example. Uh, in reality, there isn't really much going on. Uh, so, so it's essentially, we ended up having a cube in the sphere. That's really what it was. Uh, and we, if you played it, essentially, there's nothing really that's happening. It's just kind of the, 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 two, the two items that are, that are static and, and, uh, and that's essentially it. Now, for our particular purpose, that's actually perfectly fine. You don't really need more than that. Uh, just as a reminder, we have the version control system. Currently, everything is in check, um, so so the, uh, the the connection is set. It would give you an error if if you don't have connection to the perforce server, and the the change the change set is is empty, so nothing has really been changed at that point. Now, the first thing that we need to do in order to make that actually work is we need to create what's called a build script. And uh, a build script really is a way to invoke Unity from the command line. We will need that later on when we are implementing the Jenkins environment because Jenkins doesn't really need the, the visual graphical user interface. Jenkins really only needs access to the, to, the, to the system that builds the game. So it will actually run on the command line. So we will invoke uh, the Unity build on the command line. And for that, we need to create or we need to add what's called a build script into Unity. Um, the build script essentially means that when you when you uh, when you call Unity from the command line, you can call it uh, with a particular script or kind of call a particular script within the Unity uh, within the Unity project, and and that's essentially the one that we are that we are going to build. So let me go to the project window, and uh, what we are going to do is we are going to create this little build script. And we're going to put that into a, uh, a folder, um, which we're going to call scripts. And now in order to, uh, for, for, for a script to, to be, to be uh, executable from the command line, it actually needs to be in a folder that's called editor. Uh, so we need to also create a subfolder here that we call editor. And uh, in this in 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 this in this uh, editor, essentially, we're going to uh, to put the, our, our little build script. So let's start with the with the script. So we're going to add a script, uh, a C sharp script, and let's let's call that uh, build. Yeah, let's call it build script. Running out of ideas here. <laughs> Uh, and as, as I'm doing that, you already see that the, um, that, that, uh, that the version control system is adding uh, things to the change set. So I, at some point, I will also need to update what's on the perforce server. So let's open that up. And for the build scripts to work or to be invoked, uh, it doesn't really need to be a class that's derived from, from mono behavior. So we can actually kind of take the mono behavior here out. So we don't really need that, and we'll, along with that, we don't really need these uh, the, the the start and update functions. And uh, here, the, the the one thing that we need to add is we need to use the uh, the Unity editor uh, namespace. So using Unity editor, right? And uh, because we need to uh, invoke the functions that are in the editor, that those are essentially build functions. And uh, we actually don't need those. Let me get rid of those. Uh, and uh, essentially, the one thing that we need is we need a script that is a, that is that is that can be that can be executed from the command line. And in order to be able to do that, we need to declare it static. Uh, so it's going to be a static void. Uh, oops, <laughs> void uh, script. Uh, and let's call that function. Uh, build windows. I'm on the windows system, so I'd like to, to, um, 
to uh, essentially make a, a Windows build. Now, obviously, if you create a, a build script, one of the advantages of doing that is that you can uh, run a couple of cleanup commands so you can tell the system to uh, to, to do certain things, to, to kind of remove certain debug statements or whatever. So I build, I, having a build script is generally a good idea because it, it, it consolidates your build environment. Now, we are going to keep it very, very simple. So, so the only thing we are really going to do is we're going to uh, tell the, uh, the, the editor to build a, a player object. So we to, to essentially to, to create a, uh, a, a build environment. And if, in order to be able to do that, we need, we, need, we need first define what scenes we actually want to, uh, we, we want to include in, in, in our build. So we need a, uh, let me just check that I make sure that I'm not kind of doing anything wrong. So we need, we need a string uh, array object and let's call that scenes. Those are the scenes that we're going to build. And we really only have one scene here. Um, so, so essentially uh, it's, it's, it's called the sample scene kind of the 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 original uh the original um, standard name for that where is the sample scene the sample scene is under assets in scenes so it is under assets uh scenes uh, and uh, sample scene dot unity don't forget the um uh, essentially the uh, to to add the the unity Kind of statement uh, and then we are going to invoke the build pipeline so um the build pipeline essentially kind of is is an, an object that that uh that allows us to invoke essentially the build command so uh what we want to do is we want to build a player object or we want to build a player and the things that we are going to pass on is uh first of all the uh, the scenes. So, so those are the scenes that we want to, um, to build out. And then we need the, um, and, and we're already getting the, 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 uh, uh, help to kind of the tells us what exactly we need to put in. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to define where actually the location is, uh, and uh, that location is, is essentially kind of the location to the executable. So we, we need to define what actually the, the location of the executable will be. If you, if you remember, the, uh, my Perforce workspace is set up in such a way that the, um, that the, 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 um, the, the Unity project resides in a directory called Perforce. And what I want to do is I want to simply put it uh, at the same level of the Perforce example uh, directory. And I want here want to have a, a build directory or Windows build directory. So what I need to do is from the current location, uh, I need to go one up. I, I, you, you, could, you could create, or you can specify it obviously as an, as an absolute path, but I'm going to kind of use a relative path. And I'm going to put it into a, wind, into a directory that's called Windows builds. Uh, or let's just call it Windows build. And, uh, and the executable is going to be called Perforce Example. Perforce Example. Dot, and don't forget the EXE if you are on a Windows machine. And the next thing we need to define is we need to define the build target. Uh, so we are going to have a build target and we want to actually have a standalone windows right so uh so that's what we're going to do let me just clean it up a little so that we can see it better and and then we need the build options right so build options and um you know in this particular case i'm, I'm just going to say none right and uh and that is pretty much it so that is essentially our build script Oops. Uh, and uh, we declared it static, so we can we can call it from the outside. It is uh, it is invocable from the outside, so we're going to execute it from the command line. So we now we now need to check if that actually works. Uh, and the best way to really do that is by just by just um, creating a little batch script on your local machine and and see if that actually kind of is working the way it's supposed to. Um, no, I don't want to update Visual Studio now. Uh, let me just save that. And uh, before I do anything, let me 
me do i need that no let's just close that and uh before i do anything let me just um first of all save the um the perforce example and oopsie sorry still in play mode uh save and um the uh change that let me just submit that to the before server so that we have everything up there and what we're going to do is we added the build script um okay click submit and uh, essentially everything is now up in our version control system on the before server so let's check if, if that is actually working um now to do that, I'm going to create a little batch file that will invoke the uh, the Unity Unity um, game engine from the command line. And obviously, you know, kind of if you if you're working with batch, usually you would, you would kind of a, you do a batch script or anything. In this particular case, I'm, I'm just going to to create a little batch file, a Windows batch file, and I'm going to put it into a uh, directory at the same level of the perforce example. So in my perforce workspace, I'm just going to create a new uh folder and i'm going to call that build script um and in this build script i'm going to create a new uh and let's create a document and let's call that build windows and actually we don't want to have it a, a txt i want to have it a bad file um yes i want to change that and let's just open that um see if i open that i let me just do one thing and nope sorry so let me let me just do one thing and open that up in um in our uh, in my in my in my uh editor let, let's just see what happens if i I can't, can't do that. Okay, so so let me just uh, edit that. Um, ah, it's opening up in, in Notepad. That's fine. So uh, currently nothing in there. Um, so let me just do one thing. Uh, let's turn off echo. echo. And then essentially uh, in the batch file, I'm just going to invoke the Unity, uh, the Unity editor. Now, how do I do that? Well, first of all, I need to identify where the executable actually is. And uh, let me just close the uh, the Unity editor because because it's not going to run um, without uh, if I if I don't do that. So uh, in order to find out where the location of the of the Unity of the Unity game engine or the Unity application actually is, what you can do is you can go to installs, and we are going to work with the with the latest version at least at the time I was I was recording that. Uh, and if I click here, I uh, it shows me Show in Explorer, and uh, uh, if I if I open that up, I sort of see the uh, location of the of the Unity executable, right? So so I'm going to copy that, uh, and I'm going to put that in here. Uh, I need to put that into parentheses, uh, and the executable is called Unity.exe. Um, so that will essentially invoke Unity from the command line. There are a couple of things that we need to do because we are we are invoking it from the command line, so we want to uh, be sure that it's 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 also it's it's just executing uh, the batch the batch script or the, the build script, and then it is um, closing right afterwards. So we're going to give it a couple of commands that are necessary here. So we're going to say minus quit, which essentially quits the application once everything is done. We we don't want to open up the editor, the, the user interface. So we need to open it in what's called the batch mode. Uh, we need to give it a pro project path. Um, and the project path is the path to the uh, to the um, uh, the, uh, the the Unity project that we want to build. And in our particular case, uh, it is, uh, let me go back to my perforce directory. So it's sort of from the build script one up and then perforce example. So that would be just making sure that I don't do anything wrong here. Um, it would be, the, uh, sorry. Uh, and, uh, let's go one up and perforce 
example, right? And then uh, I would like to execute that particular command. And in order to do that, I need to invoke the execute command, execute uh, method, sorry, not command, method, method. And the method that we're going to execute is in the build script object. Uh, because it's static, it's now visible from the outside and uh, build windows. That that was that was what it was, right? So 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 this essentially um, invokes Unity from the command line uh, in batch mode. That means that it doesn't open up the editor. It's opening up the perforce example. It is uh, executing that particular script uh, and uh, it is quitting after it is done. So that should actually be. Uh, enough. So let me just save that and uh, let's keep that open. And then I just need to go to the command prompt and see the uh, perforce. Let me go into my perforce uh, directory and here I have the, the build script. Uh, and that is my build windows, but so let's see if that works. So it's now it's not supposed to. I could I could add a couple of echo commands to kind of give me some indication of what it's doing. I haven't done that. Uh, I, I simply kind of turned off all echo. It's now going to invoke Unity. It's going to build Unity, and once it comes back. I should actually have a, a Windows builds on the, so let me go back one step. Uh, I now have a Windows builds directory here. Um, and uh, if I go into Windows build, build, I, I now have the perforce example. So let me just open it up if it actually works. Perforce example. And here comes Unity and my particularly interesting, impressive game. Okay, so um, let me just close that. Sorry. I want to close that. So. So, so, so the build script is working. That's good. Um, we've already uh, uploaded everything to Perforce. Um, so now we are essentially ready to, uh, to create our uh, continuous deployment environment. And for that, we actually need a separate machine. Um, now, um, before I do that, let me just do one more thing here. Uh, I, I'm going to add a separate, uh, a, a separate user to, um, to my Perforce setup. So this is, this is the Perforce server that I'm using. Once again, if you are in the digital media program and, or in the computer science program for that matter, uh, you will have access to our Perforce server that we run from the digital media department. If you need access to that, let us know. We can, we can manage that. Uh, but you can run your own. Uh, I created a separate tutorial that tells you how to do that. Uh, in this particular example, I'm actually running my own server on an AWS uh, instance, which, which works perfectly fine. Um, uh, what I need to do is, and, and the, the advantage of that, quite frankly, is that you have administrative access to that server. So, so we couldn't give you that obviously to our server, but on the, on, if you run your own, you have full administrative access. So I, I now need to add a, a, an additional user and let's call that user Jenkins, uh, we, because we are going to actually invoke a, uh, Jenkins, um, and let's give that user a password make any difference and I'm going to use my email oops full name Jenkins okay so um so when we when we essentially are on our uh, build machine essentially we're going to log in as Jenkins um, so, um, and that essentially kind of uh, finalizes all the preparations. So I, I have the, the, uh, 
the, the game build, I have the build script, the build script is working. I have my, on my performance, I have a separate user who I can use uh, for this continuous deployment environment. And so let me, let me switch to my second machine and just need to move things around a little here. Um, so let me do that. Now for, for the for the second machine I'm going to use a, a Macintosh machine and you quite frankly can use any any machine as, as you want. It doesn't need to be particularly powerful. Uh, we are not really running uh, a Unity in, in full editor mode, so we don't really need a high graphics uh, intensive or kind of capable system. So you can actually use a fairly old system, one that you have lying around. It just needs to be able to run Unity. Um, it's also not that particularly critical how long the build actually takes. If it takes five minutes or 10 minutes, there's really much difference. So you can use an old system that you have somewhere lying around. In this particular case, I'm using, I'm using um, uh, my MacBook that I that I used before I switched to Windows, and uh, and on this particular MacBook I'm going to install and implement the Jenkins environment. So there are a couple of things that I need to do. The first thing is I need to install Jenkins. Now, if you want to install Jenkins, go to Jenkins.io, and uh, that uh, you can you can download it for free. And, uh, and essentially the installation depends a lot on what type of system you have. In my particular case, I installed it on a Windows machine with a Windows machine, uh, sorry, on a, on a Mac machine, on a, on a Macintosh, essentially you need to use the homebrew um, package manager to do that. Um, it's not particularly complicated, but I'm not going to go through that simply because it it, it, it varies uh, quite a bit from, from system to system. On a Windows machine, it's just an executable, uh, an installation file that you click on and you install it, or you can also do it on Linux or whatever. Now, Jenkins is not necessarily only meant for for game development, obviously. That, that's, a, that's a very, very generic, very general purpose. Uh, continuous deployment environment. So what it really does, it, it allows you to create a build pipeline on a separate machine that automatically builds whatever you're currently compiling. So if you're, if you're in any form of software environment, and in fact, I do know that, that quite a few of computer science students actually use Jenkins for their projects, uh, not game related projects, they're regular computer science projects and, and that works actually pretty, pretty neat. So once, once you have set Jenkins up, um, Essentially, what you need to do is it will it will create a um, it will create a, uh, a a local web server, um, and that local web server is, is essentially the one that you that you use in order to access it. It's on the local host, uh, and uh, and it will allow you to access. Now, when you when you access it the first time, it, it asks you for, for your user credentials. I've already done that. And uh, the uh, the environment is uh, is not particularly user friendly, but it's also not that particularly complicated. We're only going to use a couple of things. It's once again, it's very very powerful, and we are, we are not really kind of using it to a, a full a full ex, uh, to to the full potential or the full possibilities. There are two more things that we need to do in Jenkins, and uh, Jenkins works with plugins. And uh, in order to be able to actually, oops, um, wrong mouse. <laughs> Uh, in order to be able to, to, to work with Unity, we need to install a Unity plugin. And in order to be able to work with Perforce, we need to install a Perforce plugin. And you can simply do that by going to the Manage Jenkins environment. And there you have Manage Plugins. So you will need to make sure that, uh, that essentially, uh, if I go into Installed, right? So I have the, uh, the P4 plugin, which is the Perforce plugin and the Unity plugin, the Unity 3D plugin, which is, is once again the Unity plugin installed. Now, technically, you don't really need the Unity plugin. You can't get around without it. Uh, it's, it's, it's just kind of a, a very simple plugin that invokes the Unity editor, and you could technically do that uh, without it. And I do know that some game companies actually do not use the Unity plugin, but instead kind of create their own, uh, their own uh, build environment within Jenkins that invokes Unity that gives them fle greater flexibility. For, but for our purposes, the, the, the Unity plugin is, is perfectly fine. So, so those two need to be, uh, need to be installed. Um, and uh, then there's one more thing that we need to do is we need to 
to go into uh, the global tool configuration. And that's a little bit hidden. We need the, the Unity plugin essentially only is a plugin that, uh, that allows us to invoke Unity, but we need to tell it where exactly Unity is, right? Because we could technically have multiple Unity installations and, um, and, uh, and Jenkins would be able to actually pick which, which Unity installation we want to have. It's, and, and for that, we need to tell it what Unity installation we actually have on the system. So we go into global tool configurations and uh, currently, I don't really have anything set up, so that would be the, the way it, it would would come when you when you install it first. Uh, so we need to add a uh, Unity uh, Unity installation. Um, and uh, so let me let me just uh, it it already filled everything out. Let me just tell show you how to get to the installation directory. Now you can give it any name, and then you would have to specify the Unity installation directory. And uh, in, in order to get that, uh, what you would have to do is same thing that we did uh, just, just a minute ago on Windows. We would go to our installs. Um, and, and just to be perfectly clear, obviously we need the same Unity version than, than we're actually kind of developing in, obviously. So this is 2.19.3.15. And uh, essentially we can also say here, reveal in Finder. And on a Mac, it's a slightly more complicated way. What you can, what you can essentially do is, um, if you if you click on the, let me just see which one was it. If you if you click on the, um, if you click on the option key, essentially here you essentially see that if you normally uh, copy on a Mac, it 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 it's copies just the file, but we want to copy the path. So, so if you click on the option key, you can copy the path to the to the Unity executable. You would copy that. Actually, let me do that here. So let me just copy the path. It's a path name, and then I would. I don't need that now. And then essentially, I would put that in here. Paste, and that essentially gives me the the past. So. Um, this is the one unit installation that I have. Obviously, I can give it any name that I want, and I can have multiple unit installations that, that are on here. So let's just save that. So now Jenkins has the information about the Unity. So uh, what we need to do now is we need to tell Jenkins actually what to do. Um, and there's actually one th additional thing that we need to we need to do because in the uh, Perforce installation we do not yet have a workspace. Uh, we do not yet have a workspace on that particular machine, so we also need to create a workspace uh, on uh, on this uh, development machine here. So, so in order to do that, we open up the P4V, um, the, the client. Now this is this is the uh, the uh, location of my Perforce server that I have on, on the Amazon Web Services. Now we're actually logging in not as uh, as myself, but I'm actually going to log in as the user Jenkins. And I currently don't have a workspace yet, so I need to create that workspace. So let me just create that workspace. Um, it asks me for a password. Um, and then essentially same thing that we did when we talked about Perforce works, workspaces, we need to map the, um, the depot to the, um, to the workspace. And let me just do one thing. I have that, uh, sorry, I have that in the main directory. Similarly to, to my Windows machine, I've set it up as a directory in the root called Perforce. So let's let's map that. So I'm mapping the depot to that to that root directory, uh, and that kind of creates my workspace. And uh, we already know that it's sort of the way um, the way Perforce. Uh, names the the workspaces. You you can change the name if you want, but but the way it it it, it names it is the user and then the the, the machine. Uh, Michael's MacBook Pro is essentially my my machine. Um, so let me just copy that because I will actually need that in a second. Let me just copy that uh, workspace name uh, and uh, if I click OK, essentially the uh, P4V client comes up. 
Uh, now I currently don't really have anything on there yet because I just created that workspace. So in order to get it on my machine, I just say get latest. And once I've done that, I now have the perforce example in my, uh, in my workspace here. Um, so that's actually everything. I'm, I, I'm going to keep that open uh, just in case. But that's, that's everything I need to do with the, with the visual client, uh, the perforce visual client. So let me now configure Jenkins to do the build for me. So the, uh, the way to do that is to go to your new item. And uh, there are a couple of different things that we can do. So don't worry too much about those. Uh, what we want to do is we want to create a freestyle project. So we are freestyling it. So let me, let me, okay, I, I need to give it a name. So let's call that perforce uh, example. And let's press OK. And, uh, and now essentially I need to configure Jenkins to do things for me. Now I can give it a description if I want. Don't worry too much about those things. We, we don't really need those. The source code management. So essentially we need to tell it what exactly the, um, uh, our source code management is. Uh, so um, we are going to choose Perforce. Now, as, as, as soon as you have the Perforce plugin installed, that option will be available to you. Um, we need to create pre credentials. So essentially, the, um, the system Jenkins needs to know where the Perforce server actually is and what user to actually pick. So we need to add those credentials. Um, but before I do that, because I just have to copy it, let me just copy the workspace name here. So that's actually the workspace name I want to access on my Perforce server. Um, and let me just add that here. So we are going to add a Jenkins credential, username with password. The username was Jenkins. Uh, the password was... Um, uh, 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 and uh, we're going to add that. Uh, okay. Ah, I need, sorry, I need pass, uh, I was a little confused. I need perforce password credentials, obviously. So let me, let me do Jenkins. I was, I was already wondering where I put the, the P, P4V port in there. Um, yeah, we don't need the ID. We just need the username Jenkins uh, password. And then we need the uh, P4V port. Um, what's the easiest way to get that? Let, let me just do one thing here. Okay, so this, this is the port for Jenkins. And once again, that is sort of the, the, uh, where the, where the, uh, the, the, the P4V, where, where the server actually is and the port. We can test the connection. Success, it tells me success. So I could, I could actually do that. So let's add that. And now I have the Jenkins credentials. Uh, that will log me into my Perforce server. I have the um, workspace that I want to pull. And actually, we don't really need to do anything else. That, that's all we really need. Uh, the one thing that we probably want to do is we want to switch to static here. Uh, so now I need to, sorry, I need to, I need to copy the workspace again. Just copy that. Um, that just allows me to kind of have, have the connection, uh, the, the, so sort of if the, that's the easiest way to really to, to do that. So, so, so don't worry about, about, about anything else. So, so kind of a static view, um, the, um, Jenkins, the master and master only essentially is, is a, is a Jenkins term. So, so kind of the Jenkins is a very, very high flexibility on how do you configure it. So, so don't worry too much about that. So we not just need to, to, to set that up that way. And then, uh, we need to tell it when it's going to build. And there are a couple of different ways how we can do that. If you want to be particularly, um, 
if, if you want to be particularly uh, computer science, you, you can actually go in and, and have uh, Jenkins um, or have Perforce set up in such a way that it actually tells Jenkins to, to build it. So whenever somebody checks or builds, submits a, a new file to the, to the version control system, Perforce will actually understand that it needs to be built now and will inform Jenkins to do that. Um, if you want to do that, you need to make a couple of configurations on the on the on the Perforce server. We're not going to do that. We're simply what we're going to simply say is we're going to want to pull the uh, the, S, the the source code management system, so the version control system, and we're going to kind of just check every fifteen minutes. So Jenkins is going to check. Perforce is not going to tell us to build it. Jenkins is going to check. So every fifteen minutes, we want to test if something new is on the Perforce server, and if something new is on the Perforce server, then essentially take it. Uh, uh, update the files here and build everything out. So um, if you, if you want to know how to set up the schedule, uh, essentially there's a there's a, a help tab here. Uh, so so essentially what we want to do is actually there's an example here, right? So so we, we just take that every 15 minutes. You can simply copy that example here and put it in here. And that will essentially uh, put the, the before server every, every 15 minutes. And then there's, let me close that again. It's an awfully long help text. Uh, and then we need to add the build step. And what we're really going to do is we're going to invoke the Unity editor, right? So we're going to build that. We are here we can select the, what, what editor we're actually going to use. We only set up one, but we could set up multiples. If you remember when we went to the global tool configuration within Jenkins, we could, uh, we could actually have multiple installs of Unity and, and, and specify them accordingly. Uh, and, uh, and we're going to simply use the one that we have right now. And, um, and then essentially we need to add the editor commands. And for the editor commands, uh, those are the ones that we just put into the batch file. So, so once again, that was my minus quit meaning that we want to quit the editor as soon as the build is done. We want, we don't want to open it up, uh, with the full graphical user interface. Uh, and then we need to set the project path. Now, in this particular case, uh, we need to make sure that we are hitting the correct project path. In this particular case, we have it in the Perforce directory. So I'm going to give an absolute path. Perforce, sorry. Perforce. And it is the Perforce example. And then I need to execute the method uh, and if you remember that was build script uh, let me just double check did we say build script or build scripts um, and it was build script dot build windows And that should essentially invoke the uh, the Jenkins or the, the Unity editor correctly. So let me save that. And as soon as I have that, I have now the Perforce example here in my uh, list of uh, Jenkins pipelines or Jenkins Jenkins objects. Now I had had this. This this is a test project that I did before before I uh, so so that I made sure that everything is working correctly. And, uh, and essentially what's going to happen now is it's going to, every 15 minutes, it's going to look onto the before server. It's going to check if anything has been changed on the before server. And if anything has been changed, it's going to uh, get those changes and make a new build. Uh, and let me just check if the build is actually building correctly. So, so what I can do is I can say build now. And that now it reaches out to the before server, kind of, kind of checks if everything is new, downloads it. And here in the in the executor status, I have the uh, information that it is currently building. And uh, let's just wait until it's 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 finished. And and if everything is working correctly, it should actually have created that Windows build directory with the Windows build executable with the before example executable in there. So let's just wait until it's finished.
So the um, one of the things that you can do is, and what people usually do is when they when they uh, create a build environment in order to make sure that everybody also understands uh, if anything goes wrong what you can do is you can uh, have the, uh, ex the, the, the executable that is built out by the Jenkins system you can have that automatically um, for example automatically put into a Dropbox folder and that way everybody who is part of the Dropbox team will automatically always get the latest build as soon as it is built so so if, if I'm as a developer update the uh, the game on the before server Jenkins will know that Jenkins will build it for me uh, and the executable that Jenkins creates will be distributed through the to the to the uh, to all the developers so that everybody has always the latest build and that's why it's called a continuous deployment environment everybody is always in possession of the latest build now obviously in order to do that you will need to f or add a, a way to synchronize uh, the the, uh, the executable file to all the development machines and once again the easiest way to do that is with, with uh, something like Dropbox um, the um, so let me just see if if it did that it actually did not let's see what what the what the what problem was for example Okay, uh, I had to stop the recording again. Uh, I made a little mistake, and uh, it took me a little longer than I than I thought it would actually. But if you if you watched me carefully, you might have actually noticed that um, the problem was that oops, wrong. Here we are. The problem was that uh, that in the uh, command line arguments, I had a space. Uh, before the execute command, so uh, Jenkins didn't really know what to do with it. It 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 it, it did not uh, result in an error, but sort of the method did not get called. So now I fixed this. Uh, so let's let's uh, let's go back to the uh, to the um, uh, essentially item here, the Jenkins item here. So if we now say build now, it will it will build the the uh, reverse example. And it should actually drop the Windows executable into our workspace folder. So let's just wait for a second until that completes. Now the um, this was actually one of the errors that are a little bit more difficult to find. Uh, but uh, eventually kind of figured out the issue. Now, once again, uh, Perforce uh, and Jenkins, uh, I think it's a very powerful combination. If you have any projects that are a little bit more complex, um, I would recommend using that. Um, if, you, if you're working with Jenkins, you probably need your own Perforce server, so setting up one yourself might be helpful. Otherwise, talk to us and we can create sort of a separate user that, that, that kind of takes on the responsibilities of being a Jenkins user. So, um, now it's actually doing something, so it's, it's kind of, it took a little longer and here it is, yay, the Windows build. Um, <laughs> Obviously, I can't run it now because I'm on a Mac machine. But but once again, if you put that into a Dropbox folder or if you linked it to some synchronization tool, uh, at that point the, uh, the the file would be updated with with everybody else, uh, and that keeps sort of the the, uh, the the executable or the latest build current with all users. You can also tell Jenkins to send out emails uh, in case something goes wrong, so that everybody is immediately informed if the build fails, and uh, and that way everything is kept up to date constantly. And that's why the term continuous deployment comes from. Um, this was essentially everything I, uh, I wanted to say. If you have any questions, once again, drop me a note. Uh, and other than that, see you at the next tutorial.